All right, guys, so in this example here, we have air entering into a diffuser of a jet engine. So we can pretty much model this as a simple control volume just around this entire jet engine. You can kind of ignore all of this stuff for the sake of this problem. It's just there to, I guess, give you a better visual of what's going on, but I think it'll just keep you confused. So just stick with what comes in at area one and what comes out at area two. These are the only two things that really matter in this problem. So this can be our, we can treat this as our schematic here and let's apply the um, energy balance equation over this control volume. So remember single inlet, single exit control volumes have zero equal to the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the other energies of basically H1 minus H2, what comes in minus what comes out plus the velocities of V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by two plus the difference in elevation, so uh, Z1 minus Z2, which would be the potential energy. And we'll close off these brackets. So this is our energy balance equation over a sing single inlet, single exit control volume. Now we can process, or sorry, we can eliminate some stuff from this equation because not all of it is really going to be needed here. So we see that we have an adiabatic um, airflow here. So in other words, we have no heat transfer, cross that out. And then diffusers, nozzles, they're not power consumption or power production devices. So we also have no power here. Now we don't have a change in elevation here. It's just left to right. So Z1 equals Z2, which would zero out the potential energy. So now we're left with zero equals the mass flow rate times H1 minus H2 plus the kinetic energy of uh, V1 minus V2 squared divided by 2. So now I see that I just need these enthalpies, these velocities, and the mass flow rate. So I have the temperature at 1 and 2, so these should be no problem to get from the property table of air. And then I also have velocity 1, and of course velocity 2 is what we're looking for from the diffuser exit. Um, so first off, if we divide both sides by the mass flow rate, we can just easily get rid of it. So let's go ahead and cross that out. And you're going to be left with H1 minus H2 plus V1 squared minus V2 squared over 2 equals 0. So I'm going to try to isolate for the velocity. So bring the enthalpies to the other side. You'll have H2 minus H1 equals V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by 2. And now if you multiply both sides by 2, we can go ahead and get rid of the division on the right side. And now all we have to do is subtract V1 squared from both sides, multiply by negative 1, and take the square. Or sorry, square root. So we'll have uh, 2 times H2 minus H1 minus V1 squared equals negative V2 squared. Multiply both sides by negative 1, take the square, you're going to have 2 times h1 minus h2 plus v1 squared. Square root all of that, and now you have your equation to find your v2 velocity. Alright, so let's see what we can start filling in here. So we'll go ahead and start the square root off again, and we're going to have 2 times h1. So at T1, we had 216 Kelvin, go to our property table, which is table A22, go to 216, and closest thing you have here is 210 and 220. So our enthalpies should be between, or, or our enthalpy for 216 Kelvin should be between those two numbers. And if you use some linear interpolation, you'll find that it's equal to 215.97. So I'm going to fill that in right over here. So 215.97, and that's of course kilojoules per kilogram minus h2 so h2 you should have 250 kelvin so turn over here and you're going to have 250.05 so minus 250.05 and now before i add the velocity we should just do some dimensional analysis here so if you have a kilojoule per kilogram for your enthalpy right and then on the right side you're gonna have your velocity and it's gonna be squared so that's gonna be meter squared per second squared so you can't add apples to oranges, you have to add apples to apples. So we just have to make sure that we're adding the correct unit, and if not, we need to add, we need to add a conversion factor somewhere. So if we break down the left side, just remember a joule is a unit of work, which would just be a newton meter per kilogram, and then a newton is just going to be a kilogram meter per second squared, newton's first law, times a meter 
and we're dividing all that by the kilogram. And as you can see, the kilogram, kilogram cancel out, you're left with meter squared per second squared. Now, the only other thing that you have to worry about, though, is you have a kilo here. So you have a conversion factor of 1,000 or a prefix of 1,000 added onto the um, enthalpy here. So the difference here between these two enthalpies is about 35 kilojoules, right? So 35 ki or kilojoules per kilogram. 35 kilojoules per kilogram would be about 35,000 joules per kilogram. So we can just go ahead and add a conversion factor of 1,000. So we'll do that right now. So times 1,000. And that's, again, to get rid of the kilo prefix. And now we're left with joules per kilogram. And now when we add it to the velocity, well, we don't need any more um, conver conversion factors. We're adding apples to apples. So again, we'll add the velocity. So V1, we add 265 meters per second. Square that. And now we'll close off our square root here, and all this equals our velocity 2. So now if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the V2, or exit velocity, equals 45.44 meters per second. It makes sense that the velocity decreased because remember that diffusers are kinetic energy extracting devices. So in other words, when you have a high velocity flowing into a diffuser, you should always have a lower velocity exiting the diffuser.